Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Lion's Table. Let's take a moment to enter into the presence of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let God's Word, which is truth, fill us and give us strength. Let us contemplate His great love for us, His sacrifice on the cross, His mercy, grace, and promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The Word was at the beginning, was with God, and is God. Indeed, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made, and without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. John 1, verses 1 through 5. Who is it that overcomes the world? Who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies to this, because the Spirit is the truth. 1 John 5, verses 5 and 6. Dear brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, we are so happy for you to join us in this ark of God's word. For faith comes by hearing God's word. If anyone keeps his word, the love of God has been truly perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. 1 John 2 verse 5. Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom should we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. John 6, verses 68 and 69. Jesus stood up and called out in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Amen. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. John seven thirty eight. Everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. In him we live, move, and have our being. Acts 17, 28. Not outside of him, not away from him, not next to him, and, not, and certainly not without him. Only in him. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. And that's reading from Ephesians 5, verses 21 through 30. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her herself to to present her to himself as a glorious church without stain or wrinkle or any such blemish but holy and blameless in the same way husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies who he who loves his wife loves himself indeed no one ever hated his own body but he nourishes and cherishes it just as christ does the church for we are members of his body. In previous video blogs, we have discussed Christian marriage in reading from Ephesians 5. But what does that mean in marriage, Christian marriage, and why, is it ma why does it matter so much that we take Christian marriage very seriously and understand seriously? God's order of relationships. So many people today get married in a church, but I wonder if they really know what it means to be married in the body of Christ. Before we get into that, let's reflect on weddings today in America. Most couples think that they are marrying because they found the love of their life, the one who makes them happy the most beautiful girl or the most handsome guy who makes them laugh. They pursue the flesh, not the spirit. We see that playing out just about everywhere, whether it's a celebrity's marriage or our neighbor's. 
They don't know that the only reason to marry, to have a Christian marriage, is to glorify God and his kingdom. There is no other reason. We were created by God. And marriage is especially important as we become one flesh and essentially one spirit. So that here in this fallen world, we embody him as one. We embody him who is the creator of all things seen and unseen. And we do this as one flesh and one spirit. Thus, as a new creation in Christ, a married new creation in Jesus Christ, we are to carry each other's burden, to build each other up. And such a union must be supported by other married couples in the body of Christ. When you see or know someone who seems to be going off track speaking about divorce or just transgressing, seeing someone else while they're married, we need to intervene. We need to encourage and to show the way forward. We need to be the good Samaritan. Show them the way out and the road that leads back to God and his kingdom. It's only accomplished through love, which is mercy and compassion. Of course, that includes forgiveness, mercy and compassion and body forgiveness. Which And that kind of love does no wrong to others. Such love fulfills the requirements of God's law. Romans 13.10 Divorce is not what God wants for us. He wants us to live. To live for Him and through Him. Divorce is like death. And because we serve the living God... Who died for us in order to con- order lived, lived who died for us in order to conquer sin and death. Marriage, as defined by God, is the only marriage there actually is. The world practices marriage, but it doesn't practice the marriage that God designed for man and woman. The world practices something they call marriage, but it isn't really. It's really just a means of self fulfillment finding one's happiness, finding someone that will give you what you want, do for you what you want done for you, someone to spend some time with you or to laugh with you or you know, to make you feel like you're not alone. But none of those reasons are reasons to get married. In fact, they are not necessarily in themselves godly. God designed marriage for a man and a woman from the very beginning. And it is intended that a man is not to be alone, and a woman isn't to be alone. We are to complement one another, and uphold one another, and strengthen one another, and, and carry each other's burdens in this fallen world. And in fact, the only individuals that can actually be married are those that are married in the name of Jesus and under the Father, and in his plan for a man and a woman. And if we are Christians and we are trying to live for Christ, then we should conduct ourselves in our marriages as Christ conducts himself with the church. And the church should conduct itself with Christ as a wife would conduct herself with her husband. And so the parallels are the same. And so when we live in a marriage as Christians, we should live as Christians as we live in our marriage and vice versa, because they are mirrors of one another. Now, the marriage we have with with Christ is not perfect yet, and also our earthly marriages aren't perfect yet, but they will be perfected one day. Christ promises that. So we encourage you to turn to God's word. Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words that give eternal life. And that's from John 6, 68. And yes, he has the words for marriage as well. Thank you for joining us for this Lions Table. We hope this has been a blessing to you. And as always, we invite you to join us again next time.